we are almost there. We already created a lot of passes. Next one is going to be the dust from the pieces when they hit the ground. Let's dive inside this effects ground pieces dust. Let's go from the very top. And the idea here is, let me just show you unloading the uh, pieces of the helicopter and we will isolate the pieces that are close to the ground and that are moving with high velocity and those pieces are going to be generating dust, which means that we need to be aware of pieces that have very low velocity or that stopped. And we also are not going to take into account a lot of really tiny pieces like we have here. We have a lot of really, really small pieces. We're not going to bother with them. So only large pieces like this and only while they are still in movement, we'll have uh, dust, little dust puffs, dust clouds around them. Let me go back to the camera view and how we achieve that. So first step, let's remove the pieces that are not close to the ground. I'm going to pack my pieces using the name attribute. So now all of this geometry is packed and I'm going to remove everything that is uh, P at Y less than 0.5. So you can see the large piece was removed and also all the small pieces. Large piece, we can take care of it later. But uh, in reality, when I was looking at the shot, what happened is we did not really uh, see that area because as the helicopter hits, there is already some uh, helicopter dust around. There is some smoke from the helicopter itself, from the explosion. Um, I could have added maybe a little bit of extra dust uh, there just from the body of the helicopter, but I'm going to leave this task uh, to you. Go ahead, adapt this. Uh, set up and uh, make this adjustment yourself and make shot, the shot even better. Uh, but let's continue for now with what we have. We are just removing the pieces that are not too close to the ground. We are unpacking them. And after that, let's measure the area of the pieces. Because remember, we said we want to remove the really, really tiny ones. And that's what we do here. We promote this area to points. We'll use that later because we'll also control the density of the dust using this area, which means larger pieces will produce denser dust and smaller pieces will produce dust that is less dense. So I have this area attribute and I'm removing all the tiny pieces. This step is done as well. After that, we will do a very common uh, process where we will have our ground and we will transfer the attribute from the pieces onto the ground. Let's see our ground. We import it here. And because we don't want to uh, process the whole ground, it's really, really huge. What we will do is we will uh, isolate the ground that is only uh, in the camera frustrum and also only the ground that is not too far away. Because what if we have some pieces that are flying one kilometer away and we don't want to compute some tiny, tiny piece of dust somewhere far, far away that we won't even register. Let's uh, keep things um, as efficient as possible. So we have this area that is in camera and you can see I'm controlling in the volume how far the volume goes. So 80 meters away from camera, that's maximum that we'll be uh, registering. After that, I'm promoting this group onto primitives so that when I do a blast, it's a clean blast and I don't have any stray points left behind. And after that, I I just isolated the piece of the ground, but I also know that I have buildings here. So let's clip where the buildings are. Here I have with object merge, the buildings are brought in. I'm templating them and I manually put the number in the clip to make sure that I'm removing the ground uh, from behind the buildings. Because later I'm going to be doing attribute transfer and if there is an area under the buildings that I'm going to add resolution to, I don't want it to be computed. It's a waste of the computation time. And following my own rules, I'm going to color this clip in red because I did a manual operation here. It was an eyeballing the distance from the buildings. After that, I'm adding some resolution to this ground geometry. You can see I'm remeshing it uh, and I'm adding the resolution for the attribute transfer. After that, I'm coloring it black and then doing attribute transfer from our pieces onto the geometry. Okay, so now where the pieces hit, that's when it is red. Let's scare, uh, scatter some points only in the red areas, which means in the scatter, I'm using the uh, color uh, to control the density. 
let me view everything through the camera. Here in the scatter node, I'm using my color, newly created color attribute as a density attribute, which means that I'm scattering the points only on the areas that have red color. After that, we will create some density attribute, which we will later use for sourcing when we work with our pyro simulation. So this density attribute will come from color. Let's view this attribute wrangle node. And you will see first, our density equals to color. But then what we also want to do is we want to control our density by speed, because you know some points or some pieces that created those points, they might have already fallen on the ground and settled over time, and they're just laying on the ground without moving. Those pieces, I do not want any dust to be created around them. For that, I am creating a float speed here, which is the length of our velocity, and then I'm doing a little bit of a fit, and I'm taking the speed between 0 and 10 meters a second and ramping it to 0 and 1. And this will be used as a multiplier on our density, which means that the slower the piece, less density it will have. And higher the speed of the points uh, is, then higher the density is. And after that, for good measure, I'm completely removing those points that belonged to the pieces that completely settled down on the ground. And here I'm giving myself an extra control and I'm setting my custom threshold. In this case, it was one meter a second. You can adjust, play around with it and see what you get. You will start uh, having more and more pieces appearing there. I'm gonna go back to my one meter a second. After that, I'm adding some noise to my density attribute so that it looks a little bit more interesting. Let me bypass this node and show you before or after. We're just using attribute density as a multiply operation between 0 and 1, adding some breakup. And after that, let me go back to my camera view. Let's look at what's happening with the velocity. Let me show you the velocity without any adjustments. This is just the velocity that was inherited from the pieces. And when I do this kind of visualization, the wherever the uh, yellow um, line is pointing, that's the direction of the velocity. Um, it is different when we visualize velocity this way. This is the tail of the velocity. This is the head of the velocity, right? So the areas that concern me are, for example, areas where I have velocity here on the ground pointing to the right, or velocities here that it points completely inside the ground. I do not really want those velocities for my sourcing. What I want is velocity going upwards and shooting out particles. This is how I want my source to look. So there is a very easy way to fix that. What we do in this adjust V is we are just doing the absolute of our velocity. So we're completely flipping the velocity values. If they were in the negative, they become in the positive. So any velocity in Y that we have will be positive. After that, we are doing a little bit of adjustment here. Let me just reduce the length so that we can see we're adding some noise to it. So our velocity looks a little bit interesting. And in the end, we are doing a little bit more of the uh, noising, but in the length only. So some uh, velocities will be longer, some will be shorter. And again, so just in the random manner. Uh, this way we have our sourcing created. These points, let me go back to the camera view. And these are the points from which we'll create a particle simulation. So the logic here, remember, a piece hits the ground. It creates an area on the ground that has particular density. Uh, if the piece is moving fast and it's large, the area is going to be dense. If the piece is really tiny or it's moving very slow, it is not going to create any dust or very little dust. And after that, we'll run a pop net here. Let me just go into manual mode and show you what's happening in the pop net inside. It is a really super simple setup. We are sourcing all points. If you go in the source, all points, and we are giving them really short uh, amount of time to live, and they have a little bit of uh, interpolation forward. This uh, helps us to have some uh, smooth lines without uh, too much of uh, staggering in our simulation. And we're adding an, a little bit of a pop wind just to make our sim a little bit more interesting. And the same way we did before, we have a few colliders, our standard ground, then our buildings that we're bringing from above, and we are bringing also our uh, volume 
for the RBD, helicopter RBD. You can see we go into FX Heli RBD and bringing our volume collider. And we're using it in a volume sample mode. That's it. There is nothing else uh, really interesting in this popnet. Pretty, pretty simple simulation. And before we are caching it, we are deleting all the attributes that we do not need. The usual we save. Normal, sage, area, density, ID, life, we keep them. The rest we delete. And if you notice, I'm actually adding a little bit of a noise before I'm caching it. Um, maybe a smarter way would be to add this noise afterwards, and that's what I should have done. But I'm going to pass this file to you uh, as it is. Please make this adjustment if you feel that it works better for you. But in my case, um, I knew that I wanted in any case add some noise to those points to make my sourcing a little bit more interesting. So let me show you in the end what we ended up with. I'm going to my auto mode. Let's turn off if we had any velocity, but here I'm scrolling a little bit and here will be our sourcing. So we have those particles shooting off the ground when pieces hit it. Okay, and those particles will be creating uh, density. So one thing I ended up doing is adjusting the velocity a little bit. Uh, let me visualize this velocity. And this is what we get by default from the simulation. Uh, let me go and show you my first adjustment. And the first adjustment here was we clamped the velocity in X and Z and multiplied it in Y. So you'll see that we won't have that much of the dust shooting left or right and more of it upwards. And again, this is just an artistic decision that after some ex experimentation, I decided to go for. I saw some pieces falling and I wanted the dust to be kicked up more upwards. And here's the first adjustment. And this is the next adjustment where we control our velocity by age. So as the particles are aging, as uh, uh, they are older, it means the piece hit the ground or emission happened already uh, some time ago, then the velocity is less. So newly born particles have more velocity, older they get, they have less velocity. After we did all of those adjustments, we are turning out to our points into a volume, um, controlling particle scale here through this node and uh, adjusting my voxel size based on the particle scale. You will see in my setups often, voxel size will be particle scale multiplied by 75. So that's uh, very often what I use. 75% of the particle scale is going to be my voxel size. And particle scale, again, is trial and error to see what is, looks, works the best for your setup, for the distance from your camera and for the capacity of your machine. We'll look at the blast without the velocity. This is going to be the resolution that... Uh, my volume will take on. One note here about the volume resolution. What I'm looking at here in the viewport, I cannot 100% rely on the fact that this is how my volume is going to look like. Let's make sure uh, and let's check our settings in the viewport. Put your mouse over the scene view, press D for display options, and there let's go check our geometry and let's check that our volume quality is set to high. Uh, well, volume filtering is set to off, which means that when I move around, the quality of my volume stays um, at its maximum resolution. And then let's see what is this limit for the maximum resolution in my viewport. If I go to textures, right now my resolution is limited to 512 voxels. And if I look, actually my density on the longer side is 3,300 voxels. So 100%, I'm not looking at the actual uh, high-res uh, volume that will be actually sourced. So this is just an approximation. Very often I see uh, artists making a mistake that they see something in the viewport, they believe, oh, my volume is low-res no matter what I'm doing, and they keep, keep trying to fix that when really it's not an issue. Um, double check what your limits are, double check what your actual resolution is in voxels, and best way to check how it is going to look, render it. Okay, in my case, I did test and I know that my volume is going to look just, just fine with this resolution, and I was ready to run it through a pyrosim. So we have our sourcing, and now we are ready to run our pyro simulation. And this pyrosim is really, really simple. Uh, let me make sure that I'm in manual mode before I start changing things. 
and let's see what we have. In the ground pieces dust source two, you can see that when I was caching, I cached everything from frame 1435, and this is just the frame at which first piece fell on the ground and first a puff of dust would have happened. So I'm linking my solver to it so that we don't need to compute anything before that. It will be a waste of time. Uh, let's go to our setup tab and see we have the usual. Here you can see I adjusted global substeps to two because what I noticed here uh, in the pyro solver, you can see that the RBD seam volume is a collider. And at some point I was getting issues when uh, the collisions were not working that accurately because here pieces are moving extremely fast and I was getting some dust that what was completely penetrating through pieces and there were some pieces closer to camera where it was uh, rather noticeable. So to fix that, I needed to increase my global substeps. Remember, global substeps are the ones that help you take into account your colliders between the frames. After that, uh, let's go to our collision, and again, this is the usual. We have our SDF volume velo uh, plus volume velocity. You will notice that velocity scale is changed to 0 0.5, and just because our pieces, our collision pieces here on the helicopter, they are moving really, really fast, and some of them would have, they do have really strong velocity already in them. And when I use when I use that as uh, colliders, what was happening? I was getting some puffy mushrooms, and it was easier for me to calm down this velocity and control the velocity from my sourcing directly. That's why this was lowered. Uh, let's see what we actually are sourcing is density at the scale of five, and then we are sourcing velocity through pool operation, and then we have our top rotor wind through velocity. You can see our top rotor wind is here. It's the same way we sourced it before for other types of pyro simulations. And I'm sourcing it at a pretty low scale because it's just in the end. What I will notice is those uh, the wind affecting the dust that was left on the ground. And as usual, our power pyro solver is uh, red. If I jump inside, it is because we brought our building colliders in this manner inside. Let's go back up, see what else we have here in our fields tab. Let me just open this a little bit. We have very little dissipation because this is dust and it stays down. Nothing much uh, changed here. We go into shape and in the shape we are using the same uh, new parameter that we have now in Houdini 20, density influences gravity because it is dust, right? The same as we had dust before from the helicopter as it's being kicked up, the later over time, we should try to settle down, uh, back down if it's uh, the dust had high density. And then you have your usual disturbance controlled by speed field and turbulence. I'm not gonna go more into details of those uh, parameters. We've gone through them already. And we have everything cached. Uh, the usual VDB clip to control that we don't have too much stray voxels outside the camera view that we don't need. And we are ready to check the simulation through our render and see how it looks in Karma. We are inside our LOPnet and we are looking at LOP test 010. You can see my visibility flag is the on assigned materials. So this is our usual workflow. We bring in our heliground pieces dust from SOPs. And then we are assigning some materials to it. I'm reusing the same materials we created earlier. If you look at my material library, we have our smoke light and smoke dense. And in the assigning, I'm using the smoke light, same smoke I used for the helicopter dust. And you can see where pieces are hitting the ground. We can see some dust being kicked up. Somewhere it's with more force, somewhere uh, with less. Um, so it looks like everything is working in Karma and we are ready to move, move on to the next item.